attack him to see if they can get some reality TV response. Yeah, I mean, when you look at somebody like Donald Trump, as we've been talking about, and I'm not exactly sure what your view is, Biggs, but um, I definitely respect his uh, boldness, you know, the way he speaks his mind on certain issues, even if I don't agree with him, I definitely respect that. But when I look at things such as uh, his desire to increase the domestic surveillance state, his desire to put people on no-fly, no-gun by list, all these other things, and uh, Reindeer Daniels is over here, <laughs> I guess we can take... His his thoughts, uh, Kit Daniels. Well, here's the thing, though. It, but here's the thing, though. If if you if you're if you're a part of the so-called Patriot group, you know that you know there because there's so many different versions of it. But if you're a part of this Patriot group and and you're actually uh, really concerned about what's going on with the BLM and you don't like the, the federal government coming in and sweeping and taking land, then how in the hell can you even wholeheartedly support Donald Trump when that is the person who? supports eminent domain. That's I the agree. one who goes in. He's the big guy. He represents the big government. He wants to go in and use his money and power to bully you, take your land, and use it to put a hotel on. And it's no different than the BLM or President Obama loose. wanting to take 2 million acres out here in Oregon to make a, 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 a national refuge or a huge monument uh, for the federal government. It's the land that they're trying to take from people out here in Oregon. It's hunting land. It's the land for loggers. It's land for ranchers. So if, if you if you claim to be a patriot and you claim to be part of this movement, but then you are all of a sudden for Trump in that sense, I just don't get it. I'm co completely confused by it, how people are like, oh, I stand with the Hammonds, um, I stand with the Bundys, but I'm voting for Trump. Completely going against that contradicts itself. Well, I, I do agree with that. That was always my issue with Trump and also, also my uh, confusion when dealing with people uh, in the conservative community. Uh, they had mentioned many of the same things that you mentioned right there, but then they would vote for a guy like Donald Trump. And like I said, I, I do respect some of his boldness, but uh, his policies are, you know, very lacking in my personal opinion. Um, honestly, I think he's captivating Republicans now in a similar way that Obama did in 2008. Granted, Obama was elected on a bunch of co campaign lies. Trump is telling you straight up he's going to take your rights away and people still want him to be president. Uh, so to each his own on that regard. He's a popular guy in high school, you know. Uh, people, uh, they, they see something, they want to follow it, they think it's cool. They think that his coolness is going to rub off on them. Maybe they'll get something out of it down the road. But at the end of the day, stop thinking about that. You need to think about the future of the country. And really, when you look at it and you lay down the facts, you look at these people who are what they're running on, um, and, and, and you look at it all, I, the only clear choice uh, I see is Rand Paul. You right. know, I, I think Rand Paul could work with a number of other candidates, and maybe they could put a, a good team together. But I think he's the best choice, hands down. Uh, I'm sorry, Biggs. Uh, Alex is joining us once again. I don't have headphones on, and I'm leaving. Okay. And I'm going to be calling in once I'm on the road, listening on the iPhone app on a local radio station. But I'm going to be honest here, because we are all on the same page. People say, "Why does one writer say one thing, and another says another view?" Because we're not a all different. We're not drinking Kool-Aid around here at Jim Jones' house, even though my last name's Jones. Not my fault. <laughs> but here's the deal. I don't think Trump's perfect, but the establishment hates him. And the whole point is I'm not voting for Hillary or Jeb. I'm always say forget the presidency, work off a state level like Greg Abbott and, and you know, fight all this stuff. But all I'm saying is I'm not supporting because he's the cool guy at high school. I thought he was a goofball with orange hair and didn't like him six months ago. I didn't like, and I don't like him because he came on my show. I was invited to hang out with Bush and everybody else and Clinton before that. Okay. And I didn't do it. Trump has got him pissed. Trump has got him concerned. And I just think it's too easy to sit there. And I'm not disagreeing with Biggs totally. I just don't think he's the main enemy. Okay? So here, here. Let's switch off Trump for a minute. Who do you support more, Hillary or Jeb Bush? Let's talk about those two. Or here, let's change the subject from, I want to hear this next five minutes. I'm getting in the car. I want to hear it. Please. I don't ask for much as this. I want a discussion of Hillary. I want a discussion of Jeb Bush. And I want a discussion of Ted Cruz, because I like Ted Cruz. Oh, oh my God, he was in the, his wife was in the CFR and Goldman Sachs. What do you expect of the elites? If we don't get some converts, we're screwed. We want to win. And if they get in and do bad stuff, we run over them like like Boner, right. Boehner. So uh, I, want, I want Ryan thrown out. Yeah, but see, once they're in, they're so hard to get. Leon, we have the Congress with the soldiers on and the Black Ops commanders coming on because they know we can make change. There's good people in government. They've got to get our support.
And so all I'm saying is we can't be 100% purists that everybody's corrupt and we're going down. I'm not saying even trust Trump. I'm going to just off Trump. Hillary. Jeb. Cruz. Cruz. Tell, let's talk about them. Okay, Trump's the devil. To hell with the devil. All right, Biggs <laughs> is right. All right, he's the problem. Now, you're faced with Hillary. You're faced with Jeb Bush. You're, you're, you, what do you do? What do you do, bad boys, when the Easter Buddy comes for you? Now, I'm leaving. You got 25 minutes left. We're Papa Goblin and Papa Dragon in here in the office. Go ahead. All right, I'll be the first to start. All right, um, when I talk about Hillary Clinton, I'm reminded of the conversation we had with Larry Nichols, who Alex sent uh, myself and Josh Owens to interview this past year. And we spent a lot of time with, uh, with Mr. Nichols. He was telling us about his time in the Clinton campaign and you know all the things uh, associated with Hillary. And the issue I learned from that is Hillary Clinton is not a very good person, according to Larry Nichols. I think he's a very believable guy in many aspects of it. Now, to the flip side of that, I'm reminded of Governor Jesse Ventura, who tells the story about how wrestling is much like politics. I hate this guy, I'm gonna kick this guy's butt, and afterwards they go out and they have a beer and they have a steak. Right. And then I look at a guy like Donald Trump, who invites Hillary Clinton to his wedding. I've heard of keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I've never heard of invite your enemies to your wedding. Well, and Hillary so, said she didn't get him a gift. So that's my issue about it. I'm not exactly <laughs> convinced not that either of them are these bitter <laughs> enemies that they want you to believe. Uh, going on to guys like... Well, um, I will say they're probably not going to be very friendly at the table now that he went there and, you know, drug her husband across the coals. Yeah, I, I'm calling sure. Calling out his sexual um, well, once predatory again, I mean, behavior. When I look at a guy... So you I'll know, give him that. You know, I'm just like, we'll move on to the other candidates, but just basically the deal with Trump, he's an entertainer, he's a businessman. He knows what to say to, you know, invoke emotions out of people or get them to do what they want to do. Now, when you look at a guy like Jeb Bush, of course, I'm not a fan of the Bush family. Uh, many of the people who uh, were against George Bush, his brother, and went for Obama just for that reason, are supporting a guy now in Obama who's doing similar things to what Bush did. Obama comes out, he says, uh, the Bushes, they're pushing war, they're pushing all this stuff. They're pushing the NSA surveillance or, you know, the, the things that are going on at the time, the Patriot Act. Then Obama comes out and pushes those same things. And I'm not thinking that the apple's going to fall too far from the tree once you get to Jeb Bush. So that's also right. my issue when we have with him, uh, you know, many other characters. Jeb still seems like he has daddy issues. Like he still needs to please in the legacy. And, you know, he's not going to go out there and be his own man. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think he's really working off legacy. I think he's working more off legacy, honestly, than Hillary is. Hmm. Hillary, I think she is very proactive she's in that sense. She's her own sense. woman and she's a, that's, I, I think she allowed all that stuff to go on with Bill because it was more about the power play. It was there, more about the ultimate goal of power. Sorry, I have to interrupt programming. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm about to leave now. Now I'm in the studio, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just keep doing this. It's actually part of the fun. Do you realize that Janet Reno's dream girl is on screen right now, Megyn Kelly? I'm not a fan Literally, of here. Rachel Talking Maddow's not, dream girl is on well, TV there, right now. Think, I'm leaving, that's why I'm not on there at night. I I'm gonna be a good that, boy, bye-bye. I'm now actually leaving the building. You now have 35 minutes of transmission. I no, we just got more time. All right. <laughs> well, it's clear that Fox News is uh, going, rallying around Cruz. Did I say Fox News and Cruz? And um, I mean, they've got him on right after the debate. They wanna talk to him, so. Okay, like but really pushing so him. since we're on the topic of Ted Cruz, you know, what are your thoughts about Ted Cruz? I just can't stand listening to him. I think he sounds like a little mouse. Like his name should be Orville Redenbacher. That's what he, he just has that look about him where he's like, oh, and I just, I don't like him. He's very wormy and like a rat. He's just like a little mouse or something. Not and oh, real. I don't, uh, I don't trust Your him. Your girlfriend sees her. It's time to spend time with Kelly. I'm so, oh, God, I'm on air. I told you not to open that. I was up having fun. No, that's it. Now I'm gone. Comedy's over. <laughs> ah! <laughs> we care what the media thinks. We care. Oh, please don't talk bad about us media. It hurts us so bad. Yeah, one thing I like about... Uh, yeah, Ted Ken has some key stuff to say earlier. Make your point about populism. Yeah. That's why I'm so excited right now. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run, Infowars.com. Yeah, it's like... Did I mention the sales of nutraceuticals? <laughs> yeah, I want to say one thing about Trump, though, moving on to Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah. One thing I like about Trump is the fact that, yeah, people that are not going to agree with everything he says. You know, he, he's, 
you know, there's even stuff that he's pushed about intimate domain in the past, so on and so forth. The but one thing I do like about Isengard him is... The power is now at your command. Yeah, he's like... Sauron, ruler of the Earth. Oh, sorry, I had yeah. on for a minute. Go ahead, kid, I apologize. Yeah, people are like, a lot of libertarians are, are claiming that Trump's like a Sauron, this and that. You know, he's, he's authoritarian and blah, blah, blah. But Trump is at least pushing the Overton window up a couple inches towards liberty. And I have never seen a candidate in a presidential election that's really been able to do that in my entire lifetime. Populist firebrand. Kit Daniels, continue. Yeah, yeah and going to, on to Ted Cruz... One thing I do like about Ted Cruz is he, his rhetoric, like he talks about very libertarian stuff. Like he wrote that, I think it was the New York Times on January uh, of last year. He's definitely he an ideologue. Here's the yeah. danger. You know that Alan Greenspan, 40 something years ago, was friends with Ron Paul, was the leader of the libertarian movement, wrote books against the New World Order. Yeah. So yeah. you can also need to that, That's a guy who joined Soron. Darth <gasps> Vader. But I'm not saying he's going to do that. The point is Trump is already orange top, top capped Vader. Vader. Oh, Leanne, go ahead. You have something to say? No, I was just Darth Vader's right there. Oh, oh yeah, right behind me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm leaving now. I apologize. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye -bye. Go ahead with your point, kid. Well, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing about Cruz is, like, when he attacked uh, Obama over his imperial presidency last year, he was taught, he quoted Montesquieu and this and that. The only person I've ever heard anyone that, quoted like Adam Smith, John Locke, and those kind of guys has been Ron Paul. So Ted Cruz, I have my own concerns about Ted Cruz, but it's like we all of a sudden we have these presidential candidates, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, that are, they're saying stuff that you will never hear from establishment candidates. And you and Leanne talked about earlier about how uh, Clinton and uh, Bush are living off their legacies. It even goes beyond that. They're living off the establishment legacy that right. goes back, like the Blue Bud families, the Bushes. I think they're related to royalty uh, I think it's like the Queen of England back hundreds of decades I think Jim Mars wrote a book about that recently so <laughs> right it's just so ridiculous that people don't understand that the whole state's craft Machiavelli this whole uh, system of dominance and control of governments that we have today dates back 1500 2000 years we had Roman emperors doing the exact same thing that we have presidents doing right now Right, it's the playbook. They use the same plays over and over and over again, and the reason why they do so is because they work. Except yeah. for now, they have more advanced technology where it's a lot easier to distract the serfs. You don't, you don't just have to give them the Olympics or the the football games. I mean, yeah. we've got that too, but now there's three hundred, yeah. you know, different television stations. No, you got over a thousand. <laughs> a thousand. I don't have a television, so yeah. I, yeah. Like uh, two years ago, when I interviewed Ron Paul. For the nightly news, uh, he said something that I still remember today. He said that governments, it's kind of like they have exhausted their experimentation on how to control the population. Mm. And I think that's re very key today with Donald Trump. As the establishment has, like you said, has run all these playbooks, and the Federal Reserve even ran their own playbooks on how to you know, steal countries' assets through uh, all these rotten uh, loans that they can never pay off, like in South America. But yeah, governments have... They've used all these different experiments and playbooks for the last 1,500 years on how to control the population, and now they're just completely running out of ideas and it's no longer working. And, you know, with the rise of the Internet, you, you have an explosion of Austrian economics and ideas that are rapidly expanding across borders and across ideologies and, you know, cultures. So now this is exactly why we see a populist movement led by Trump and Cruz and Rand Paul and so on and so forth. Very good, very good, Kit Daniels. Now we're going to jump now to Joe Biggs. You can hang tight, Kit. We'll come back to you here in a little bit. But uh, Biggs, you've been waiting in the wings and listening to what we have to say. And I know you got an early day tomorrow. You got to get back out there in Oregon and find out what's going on. So just give us uh, your take on what we've been talking about and uh, give us your sign off. Oh no, it's so good. It's on like eight o'clock here, man. We're on the oh, West wow. Coast. Okay. I got all the time in the world. So I'm still <laughs> hanging out. Uh, back to Ted Cruz, though. I think he's like the weasel guy in high school. They just rats on everyone. <laughs> Like, he tattletales on everybody. Like, you know, honestly, if I was Rand Paul, I'd, uh, I'd make Donald Trump my vice president. And I think I would uh, let Ted Cruz have a position in there with me as well. Uh, maybe he could go in and uh, take over all the media stuff since he's a really good uh, debater and talker and pretty much just does anything when it comes out. It seems like it's trustworthy. But uh, that's, what the, that's the feeling I get with Ted Cruz. Yeah, I don't he's fully believe talker. what he's saying, but he says it so professionally that I feel like I'm being duped. It's like, 
it's like a uh, like a slick a car salesman, you right. know, or that 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 random person that uh, person at the kiosk when you walk through a mall.